and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But first off, what are we drinking today? Drag Me to Hellas. Today we're going to be talking about another 1982 movie. It is called The Slayer, and sometimes in some regions called Nightmare Island. Which actually I think is a better title for the movie. Yeah, it fits it's a little. It's more fitting. Yeah. It's directed by J.S. Cardone. It stars Sarah Kendall, and she was famously in Karate Kid 2... A stewardess number two. <laughs> also stars Alan McRae, and he is in three of the three ninja movies. Hogan super in that toupee. Like. <laughs> <laughs> the movie starts out with the uh, main character, Kay. She's having a dream. She ends up getting attacked by a monster, and her face gets grabbed, and she gets pulled away, and she wakes up. Kay is an abstract artist, and she paints what she dreams. Her boyfriend, the shitty mustache, <laughs> the shitty 80s mustache, he thinks that she's overworked and so she needs a vacation. He gets her brother and his wife and they set off for this island. Smoking in the plane and it's all, course, yeah. that's all some super enclosed yeah. area. Pilot's <laughs> all weird and creepy. The Pierre Trudeau pilot guy. When they land, it turns out that like there's no taxi service on this island. So they gotta walk from the plane miles to where this beach house is. And on the way, they pass this kind of abandoned, run-down theater. Kay stops and she looks at it and I've seen this in my dreams. I've painted this. So while they're in the house, the pilot guy knocks on the door, warning them that there's a hurricane coming. It cuts to this old fisherman guy. All of a sudden, someone takes an oar and just clubs him right in the head. Cracks his skull pretty much in half. Yeah. That night, they're all trying to sleep. Kay's boyfriend, David, hears something. Eventually, he makes it down to the basement. It's shadows, and he's slow, and he's trying to find where this noise is coming from. An old abandoned elevator shaft eventually goes up to and pokes his head in. Door for the elevator shaft closes on his head. Yeah. It severs his head right off. And then it shows his body being dragged up into the shaft. Kay wakes up. David's next to her. She goes to go kiss him. And takes the blanket off and it's just the head. <laughs> yeah. She's kissing this fucking dead head. This severed head. And then she wakes up and that was a dream. They find out, of course, David's missing. The other two think, well, he just took off early to go fishing or whatever. The next day, he's still missing. And she goes out to go look for him. Kay goes to the old abandoned theater. And she eventually goes up upstairs to like the balcony and looking out the window and it's nice beautiful scenery and turns around behind her is what's left of David minus his head. Eric suspects maybe it's the pilot. Kay thinks that it is her own dreams which is causing the murders. Eric goes to the boathouse to get some flares because they need help and goes out to the dock to prepare to fire the flares and fishing line comes out of nowhere, wraps around his neck and drags him into the water. And it's a great scene because it's all shadowy. You just see him being dragged into the darkness. His wife wakes up because now he's missing and she goes to the boathouse. There's this point of view pitchfork scene where this pitchfork <laughs> is coming towards her. Just the way it's done and the pacing of it all is great. Has to break through the window to get out and you can see her grab the edges of the window and yeah. her hands being sliced open. Yeah, it's like, ooh. And you're like, she's gonna make it. She's out, she's gonna make it. And boom! Yeah, as, right through. As soon as you think she's out that window and she's safe, then Kay wakes up and she, you know, she goes looking for her friends and she finds them all dead on the beach the next morning. She runs into the house, boards up the house, wrecking everything, all the yeah, china's all, all glass. <laughs> all over the place, wrecking the whole house. and So she's just drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes <laughs> and burning herself with these cigarettes to stay awake. She has the fridge in front of this one door and the fridge starts rocking and this hand comes out through the top of the door. And that's where we're going to end it. <laughs> yeah. If you want to find out what happens to Kay and her dreams and whether it's a man or a monster stalking her, Finish watching The Slayer. One of the best things is the production value of it. And for 1982, I mean, it looks fantastic. The cinematography is really good. The lighting's really good. The locations. It's kind of a classy looking movie. It looks like a James Bond movie almost. <laughs> yeah, right? kind of. Yeah, on the beach yeah. and everything. And they do a great job of the atmosphere as well. The vacation aspect of it. You let your guard down a little bit. Yeah. Looks all nice. And then the killing starts happening. The atmosphere kind of gets a little dark 
dark and grim, and then you don't want to be there anymore. And they do yeah. a great job of that as well. Even though as beautiful as it is, you have the sense of no escape. Yeah. This beach has these big hunks of rock. Even that creates this kind of like isolation, like like you're walled in. The theater, the rundown theater is a really cool, neat setting. The 80s hasn't really found their footing yet. Yeah, not yet. It's still the 70s. It's still kind of the 70s. And this movie has a very 70s vibe. The kills and the effects are very 80s. So it's got this really neat kind of mesh between a 70s feeling and looking movie with 80s effects, 80s style like slasher kills. And even the music is mm -hmm. kind of a neat blend because the music is like very orchestral and big orchestra score. It's really good. Yeah. But there's a little synthesizer thing happening too. So the, 80s, the 80s are, 80s are in. creeping in a little bit. The effects are fantastic in this movie. They're top notch. They are. Really. They are top notch. And the movie manages to build a lot of tension. There's a lot of story and dynamic yeah. in this movie. But it all centers around characters too, right? The movie's yeah. a little bit slow going, but that really helps building the tension. Yeah, because you know something's going to go on. It's yeah. like, something's got to happen here soon. The shit's got to hit the fan, yeah. right? Before every kill, there's a huge buildup. When David is going through the basement before he gets up to the shaft. It's yeah, a you, long scene. You know something. You watch him walk through the whole house almost in real time. Like, it's a real buildup. Yeah. And you know it's going somewhere, and when it finally gets there, it's a Hell of a payoff. And same thing at the end where uh, Kay has boarded herself into the house. And she's mm -hmm. just in the house by herself. Like, it's a long scene of her just being there by herself, trying to stay awake and yeah. nodding off. And it really does a good job of, okay, something's going to happen yeah. at some point. She keeps waking up, yeah. though, too, right? You're like, okay, fall asleep already so yeah. something can happen. But she doesn't yeah. and it takes a while. Table with the glassware in front of that one door. And you could... That decanter and yeah, everything? You can yeah. see the doors trying to be pushed open and the glasses are kind of like... Ding, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. I was thinking too, yeah. I was like, that's that's a nice looking decanter. Yeah. And all that glassware. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The, the whiskey that could go on that decanter. Yeah. Oh. They do a great job of misdirecting you in this movie. Oh, yeah. You think that he's the one that's doing something, yeah. right? The guy who's renting that, that house to them. Yeah. They mention it themselves, it's like, well, maybe it's this guy that's yeah. doing something. Is there a man out there, or is it a monster like we've seen in the dreams? The dream aspect of it is pretty neat and ahead of its time. Like, this is yeah. before Nightmare on Elm Street. The classic scene in Nightmare where Nancy is trying to mm -hmm. stay away, drinking the coffee. Well, well this movie did, did it first. Yeah. And the whole aspect of dreams killing. They beat Craven to the punch on this yeah. one, you know? And it keeps you wondering, like, what do the dreams have to do with it? Is she the killer? Yeah, you, like, that's the thing. You don't know until the end. And yep. speaking of the end, it's a very cool ending. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's you put your own interpretation onto what has happened in this movie. And you think it may be a cop-out, but it really isn't. No. It's not at all. <laughs> if you're a fan of movies like, well, Nightmare on Elm Street, American Gothic, The Remote Island and Someone's Killing You. Yeah, exactly. Check out 1982's The Slayer. And keep drinking. <laughs>